Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It's the 9th of June and a pretty quick update this week. As always, we have the chapters, so you can jump to the particular update you care about the most. New videos this week, so I dived into the idea of modifying how we think about applying conditional access, those conditions and then controls for accessing different cloud applications, be them uh, SaaS services, on-premise or something you custom create. So we're gonna drive it by setting attributes on the enterprise apps in Azure AD and then use attribute classifications to drive policy. And it's, it's really cool and it completely can change how we think about applying conditional access. So I walked through that in that video. And as a follow on to that, what happens if you have multiple conditional access policies applying to a particular authorization request. So I walked through exactly how they all fit together. On to what's new, so on the compute side, we now have multiple virtual machine backups per day in general availability. Now this does require the use of the enhanced policies for virtual machines, but now I can configure snapshots all the way down to every four hours. So I can do four, six, eight, 12, and 24 hours for my virtual machines within a certain set of hours. I maybe only wanna do it during the working day. Now, something to consider though, Remember, I also have an instant restore capability, which is where it keeps the local snapshots of the managed disks. So that if I want to restore, well, it's just a snapshot restore, so it's super, super fast. Well, there's a limitation on how many of those I can store. So if I start making this very, very frequent, it's gonna reduce the number of days of instant restore I can maintain. So just something to consider there. Then, Azure Container Instances now has integration with Spot in Preview. So the whole point of Azure Container Instances is, hey, I just need some ad hoc container running from some image, spin that thing up, I'll just pay for the per second memory and core usage, and then maybe it goes away. Or maybe I even use it as burst capacity from my Azure Kubernetes service via the virtual kubelet that lets me use ACI as additional capacity. Maybe hey, I've got a certain number of nodes, I don't wanna scale the number of nodes, I just need some burst, hey, I can use taints and tolerances, and I go and jump out into an Azure Container Instance or set of those. Well, now on top of this ability to just have Azure Container Instances, remember Azure has a whole bunch of spare capacity. The whole point is it's a hyper cloud, I can spin up stuff whenever I want, so it has to have capacity just waiting around. So rather than having it just idle, it makes it available to us as the customer as spot. So we get it much, much cheaper, but it's on the condition that, hey, if it's required for some other customer's pay-as-you-go workload, we can get kicked off. So spot is really useful if I have some interruptible workload that most likely is resumable, that, hey, yeah, I wanna run it as cheap as I can, and I understand I can just get kicked off, that's okay, I'll restart it again when I can. So if that condition applies that it is interruptible, well I can now get the benefit of Azure Container Instances with that very cheap capacity that is spare. So hey, in preview, I can go and try that out. On the networking side, so Azure App Gateway, remember Azure App Gateway is our regional layer seven, um, load balancing solution, has a lot of great capabilities, can integrate with the regional uh, web application firewall as well, well now has private link support. So the private link lets me say, hey, for that inbound front end, I can now have private endpoints, i.e. IP addresses in other virtual networks that now via private link will then channel to that front end. So that IP address, that private endpoint, could be in a virtual network in a different subscription, even a different tenant, but it's all staying over private connectivity. So it really expands the scenarios where, hey, I can make my services available that are being fronted by Azure App Gateway. And then Azure Front Door, both standard and premium, are now available in the Azure Gov Cloud. Remember, Azure Front Door is that layer seven, so you think HTTP type workloads, that is that global balancing solution. So I have these anycast IP addresses that I'll connect to whichever one is closest to me wherever I am around the world. Then it has a set of backends that it will go and fetch the data on my behalf. It integrates a content delivery network so it can cache things as well. 
but it will terminate that TCP and the HTTPS connection at that edge location so I get a much faster connection experience. And then it will go and grab large blocks of data, cache them and feed them to me as I ask for it. Really powerful solution. Hey, if I'm using Azure Gov, I can now take advantage of that. And then for the Azure Load Balancer, I talked about this a few weeks ago, that ICMP was available, i.e. ping. Well, now it's also available for IPv6 front ends. So I can now do pings and trace routes, which is really useful if I'm trying to test the connectivity. Hey, is this working? Being able to ping something is really useful to check, hey, do I have that path available to me? And of course, trace route will show me all of the hops along the way. So that is now GA. On the storage side, so now we have Azure AD support for Azure Files SMB shares when I use the REST API. So we've had Azure AD integration for a while now if I go and connect via the SMB protocol. But what this is saying is if I use the REST APIs to go and talk to those file shares, I can still now use the Azure AD integration, the Azure AD role-based access control, so I don't have to go and use shared keys or SAS tokens. Now remember, that does mean the Azure AD identity, be it a user or group managed identity, would have to have data plane permissions um, and on that content to be able to use this, but now I can use the RESTful APIs, which means I could use Azure AD to actually now go and communicate via the portal. You actually see an option when I go and look at Azure files and I'm in a share, I could switch to Azure AD authentication. On the database side, so Kusto has had a Windows emulator for a while. It's a Docker container. And that Docker container doesn't have the regular ingress mechanisms. I can't do streaming or queuing or that type of input to it. But I can use the ingestion commands to populate some data, but then I can test my Kusto queries. Well, now it's also available as a Linux uh, Docker container. This is really useful if I have maybe some kind of automated testing, if I just have a dev environment and I don't maybe have internet connectivity or I don't want to spin up the Azure service, I can emulate the interactions running my KQL against the Kusto backend. Again, it's not going to be able to have logs streamed to it in a regular sense that I could do with Azure Data Explorer, for example, but I can use the ingestion commands to get data into it but then I can test my KQL. So hey, if I'm in a Linux environment, I can now use it there as well, so that's GA. And also now my Kusto query language has a geographic context ability. So now in my KQL query, I can run this geo info from IP address. So I give it an IP address, and what it's gonna integrate with is the GeoLite 2 um, data set from MaxMind, so I give it an IP, and what it's going to return to me is the country, the state, the city, and the latitude and longitude coordinates. So if I think about my data set, ordinarily maybe I just have hey, a, a bunch of logs on the IP it came from. Well, now as part of my query, if I use this geoinfo from IP address capability, I can also now populate a huge amount of geolocation information and maybe um, grouping it by or showing it in a visual map. Um, with that. So that's GA as well. That's a really nice capability. On a miscellaneous side, so Azure AD Backup Authentication now has a web page that shows me the supported services. Now, Backup Authentication is one of the many resiliency mechanisms we have for Azure AD. They have things like regional authentication now um, to help us if there was some global issue. Many services can use the regional uh, endpoints. But backup authentication is, hey, I've used a service in the last three days. And what happens is, remember, we get access tokens. And those access tokens are very short-lived, one hour, unless we have continuous access evaluation so it can be revoked. So I have these one hour tokens and I constantly go back to Azure AD with my refresh token and say, hey, I need a new access token. I get another one hour token. So if Azure AD had some incident, we wouldn't be able to give me a new one hour token. What the backup authentication does is providing I've accessed that service within the last three days and I'm from the same machine, the same user, well, it will be able to reissue me an access token. So if there was some 
short-term Azure interruption, the Azure AD service, I'd still be able to go and renew my access token so I would get continuous use of that service. And what they've done, is if we jump over here really quickly, it's just now telling me which services integrate with um, that backup authentication. So I can go and look at the article and I can see which key services. And they're gonna update this to say which ones are gonna work with that backup authentication. So I've got the link in the description below, but if you're curious about, hey, uh, where is it working? What's it gonna do, etc., cetera? Uh, you can now just go and look at that article and check, hey, is the service I'm using covered by that backup authentication? Again, I have to have spoke to it in the last three days. If I have not spoke to it the last three days and there's an Azure AD incident, I can't go and start getting tokens for something. It can't generate its own from scratch. It's really a caching mechanism that works with the regular Azure AD. And as I go and get tokens, normally it goes and gets a long lived cache and can give that out to me. Azure Chaos Studio is now available in West US 2 in preview. Remember, Azure Chaos Studio is the idea of crafting experiments to simulate different types of events. Could be an AZ is down, it could be a certain workload is maxing out CPU or memory, but it lets me see how my service will react to different types of scenarios in Azure. So now, hey, locally in West US 2. And that was it. As always, I hope this was useful. Till next update, you take care.